Welcome to my GPT course. In this course, you're going to learn how to use GPT and Microsoft Excel to actually create something as beautiful as what we have on our screen right now. So you can see we have this right here. So we have this particular dashboard in Power BI as well, but we have actually used Excel to capture the same thing Power BI can actually do using the help of the AI called GPT. So clicking over the slicer here, we can actually filter this dashboard and you can see how dynamic it is. Once we are done filtering, we can go ahead and actually close the slicer. So go to the next page and over here we have a recommendation. When I click on learn more, it takes us right here. So everything you see right here is a suggestion that is being made to help the uh, transportation company. You can actually do this as well when you follow this particular course step by step. Not only this, we have an HR dashboard that was powered by GPT. So GPT is going to help you to actually get something like this created if that is what you want. So when we actually filter for active employees, we have all the active employees. We can go for a particular department, for example, like the IT department. And we only want to see the male gender and the male gender is filtered. And right here we see based on employee, we can see based on salary and we can actually see how interactive this particular dashboard is everything right here is actually powered by gpt and all of that so we can even use gpt to actually evaluate and see if we are following the right principle on dashboard creation so i'm going to show you how all of that is going to be done using this particular course right here all you have to do is actually pick up the course and let's learn together and see what we can do to make ai to actually help us create something very very much insightful so all of that welcome to this course Now, what you have seen in the preview is actually a very advanced dashboard. So we are trying to create a dashboard that will definitely make the transportation company to some kind of make decision on how they should go by the service. So we're going to be using the pub query. And as well, we're going to be using power pivot. So all in Microsoft Excel. So you might have not done this before. If this is your first time, just calm down. You would definitely understand everything. Okay, to create something much more advanced, we need to write some M code over here. M, M code. Then over here, we need to write DAX. You get it right now. So this will definitely help you to do something much more advanced than what basic excel can actually give to you so the question you might be having in mind is this if you are not some kind of familiar with um power bi you'll be like thinking what the heck is dax dax is actually data analysis expression it's a language used in power bi just to compute or to aggregate values and create some advanced logic for your report and dashboard. Now, what about the M code here? The M code is a language used to actually transform data and even run calculations inside Power Query. We're gonna see how to do that. And mind you, I told us that we're gonna make things very simple for ourselves using what we call GPT. So GPT will definitely help us to get things, you know, done with ease without we having to think too much and that is exactly what i want you to do so don't be afraid if you're thinking about i don't have the subscription we're going to be using gpt4 that is a paid version and, and that one is actually 3.5 so the 3.5 is what i would majorly use so which means whatever i do in 3.5 can be done in 4 but there are some time I would do something in 4 that you can do in 3.5. Notwithstanding, you can actually do some kind of work around to get it. But all in all, we just have to do something. And that is creating a very beautiful report and dashboard for our transportation business. So you need to know what are the files that are involved in getting this done. So over here, as you can see, we have this. So here we have dimensional table for buses, dimensional table for um, demographic, we have dimensional table for routes, and we now have here fact table, which is the ridership. So your question might now be like, okay, what the heck are all those dimensional tables and all of that? So what are they? So let me show you what they are.
Okay. So the tables we have here is actually, um, first of all, we have what we call dimensional table. And secondly, we have what we call fact table. Okay, the question in mind now is that what the heck is dimensional table? Dimensional table is that table that has, you know, unique, you know, unique list of values. They do not have duplicates. There is no duplicate. So example of dimensional table is your customer table. So your customer table, your region table, or your location table. So we talk about a salesperson's table. So those tables are actually on the the dimensional table. So we can as well call this particular dimensional table a lookup table. So look up. So a lookup table. So they are very unique and they use ID to actually make connection to the main fact table. So in detail, let us look at the fact table here. The fact table has different name. You can call the fact table sales Stable, uh, sales table if you are within the sales department so you can call it trans uh, transaction i think the simplest way to call this table and make it well understood to you is calling it you know transaction table or transactional table okay what is transactional table this transactional table is where you record your day-to-day uh, sales and activities if you are not in the sales, you know, uh, if you're not dealing with sales. So it's a giant table that actually consists of all the rows of the records that you actually, you know, kept on a daily basis, every single minute. It depends on the company. Uh, if you go to, let's say now, if you are using like, um, let us Talk about this business, for example, uh, a big eatery that people comes into every single time. Every minute somebody's coming in, somebody's going out. You get it now. So that table has a huge, that particular company has a huge database that controls people that buys every single time. So where that particular record is going is called the fact table. You can call it the sales table or the transactional table. So one customer can buy something for more than five times in a day. It will be recorded here. But that customer detail is going into the dimensional table. So customer A in the dimensional table remains customer A. But customer A in the fact table can come multiple times. So here, customer A comes five times. But over here, there's connection between this table and this table right here. Customer A appeared here once and it has a key. Or you can you can call it um, primary key, and we have primary and secondary key. So that is just what it is that you need to know about this. It's very very important. So understanding this now, I now said we have different tables on our own uh, project right now. So what are the tables? The tables we have um, will be this here. So we have the first table is actually a dimensional table. So you can actually use dim underscore if you want that. So boss. So we now have another one called dim underscore again. So this one is actually uh, demographics. We have another one which is a dimensional table. And again, this one is the route. So we have the final one, which is the fact table. So the fact table underscore rider ship. Okay. Now we created on that one ourselves. That is not among the list we have right here. I think there are almost two, but one is very important than the other. So that is the date table. So we can call it dimensional table as well. So date. 
then we have a helper table, which we call calculation. Okay, now with what we have said earlier, if you look at this table right here, it contains one single record, which is the boss that is in our company. This one contains one single record, which is the record of our locations where we actually, you know, uh, extend our services to. That doesn't mean we only have one record. So if, for example, we have a location called uh, West, West appeared here. If we have not, not appeared here, but just once, West once, not once. So we have the routes here. We have the factor ridership here. Here we can have duplicates of values. Then the date appeared once here, but we have multiple dates inside here. Understand? So in on a particular day, we can have that date repeating over and over again for how many transactions we actually have. While here under the date, we have one single date here that we're gonna use to connect this particular one and uh, create something very much more advanced, specifically when we customize our date to what we want. Then over here, what we have here is actually a disconnected table. It has nothing to do with all of these ones right here. So what we just have here, we stored in all our DAX calculation. That is what it's doing. You understand right now? So if you have question here, please ask about these tables and what it do. Very simple and easy. You can read about them online and you know what it is when somebody sells. Dimensional table, lookup table, fact table, sales table, and transactional table. Very simple and easy to understand. Let's us meet in the next one. Okay, now we're going to be loading our data into um, our file. So if I talk about our file, we're going to be loading this into a blank, a blank workbook. Uh, but the question is this, are we going to actually put this in this particular blank workbook? No. So where are we taking the data? Our data is going to the Power Query, PQ for Power Query. And from Power Query, we load it to the Power Pivot. So PP for Power Pivot. And that is actually where you can actually store your data into and create what we call relationship. So we're here for the practical, not for the talk. Let's do it. Okay, right here, as I've said earlier, we have something as blank as this. There is no data here. We only have one sheet inserted and we name the sheet analysis 01. Okay, let's get into it. The very first thing you have to do is to actually go to the top ribbon and then click on data. So when you click on data, you have this particular place where it says get and transform data. So those are the common sources we have. Like recent source, if you have used any sources right here, you can find the source in the recent one. So existing connection, if there is existing connection already, you can verify and get it right here. So we have from text and CSV, which we are about to take something from, and we have from web and all of that. So if all these sources does not meet your requirement, like what you really want, so you can click on get data from here. So from get data, you have this particular one here that would actually help you to get into where you want to go. So if I actually hover over this, here we have different sources on that file. Here on databases, we have different sources on that, on Azure here, on so online services, and here from other services, and this particular combined query. Okay, we are not going to go into any of this here right now. Instead, we can click on file and go to text, or you can actually use the one from here. Okay, it is time for me to search for where we have our, you know, um, files in. So right here, we have this particular transportation data set. And if you look at it, we have all the file I just listed to you in the previous video. So clicking on this one now, I can actually go ahead and click on import. So give it some time, it's gonna come up with this, and here you have something like this. So what is going on right here? What can we understand about what we have here right now? So right on this particular part, it says load, which means you can load your data into Excel worksheet and into Power Pivot. So we're not gonna go into this one right now. 
So the last one here says cancel, which means if you want to actually cancel this action, you don't want to take this action, you can cancel it. But this one says transform. So this transform is going to take it into Parquery. That is the kitchen of Microsoft Excel. And as well, you call it the kitchen of Power BI. So right now we we'll click on this and it's going to help us to push the data into Power Query for us. Okay, we have it right here. We almost have 100%, you know, clean data. We just need to do a little transformation to have our data. Okay. So if you look at it, you might have something different when you actually load your first data into Power Query. What is the difference? So now here we have valid, error, and empty. If you don't have it, that means this one is not checked. So you can always go ahead and check this particular part. So this part is to help you to check the quality of your columns. So in this column, we have 100% you know, valid, no error and no empty. Same thing to this one, this one, and this one right here. You get it right now. So always try to turn this on so that it can guide you if you have any error. But there are some errors you don't have to feel. You just leave it the way it is. So let's keep going. So now we have this here. What can we do with this? So do we have to do any other thing? No, I guess now. Okay, the next thing now is to click on home. We are on home. Click on this particular place. Do not just click here. If you click here, it's going to load this into Excel worksheet for you. What if you have like three, mil um, three millions of rows that is going to be crazy so remember in ordinary excel you can only load one point something million rows into excel worksheet power worksheet takes one point something million rows if you have 10 million rows excel can hold it for you but you cannot use the worksheet to do that so you can use power pivots in that case now just click on this little drop down here and click on close and load to not close and load so if i click on this particular close and load to now this is what i'm going to have so i have this up so with this one here what it is that we have right now is this so it's asking us how do we want to actually go about this data so the first thing i'm going to do is to say only create connection so only create connection simply means you're only connecting to the data source then the next thing I'm going to say, add this to the data model. So if I click on it right here, now it's pushing this into the Power Pivot engine for us, right? I can now click on OK. So with this is processing our data right here. So we're going to see this here. We have 40 rows. This is the first step we take. Now we can't see our data anywhere. You might be surprised if this is your first time, like where does it go to? And how can I access my data? Don't worry, that time is coming. So what if you have something to fix and you want to quickly go back to where we have just left? What do you do? You actually hover over this or you double click on it. It's going to open Power Query back for you. You get it? Now we are back to Power Query. So if you, if you are here, you don't need to do the same thing again that you've done. If I open it right here right now, it has already loaded this data into the power pivot. So there is no need to do that again. All you just have to do is just to click here or just say close and load. It will take you back right here. So the next thing you have to take into consideration is this. What if you close this and you can't find it any longer and you want to find it? How could you access it? So go to the top ribbon here. So once you click on it, so you go to data. In case you are on home, switch to data. So once you switch to data, this will be active. This was not active previously before we have our data in our Power Query. But right now, because we have data right there, so we are going to have this query and connection. So when we click on query and connection, this comes up. All right. So that is our first table. Let us load in our second table. So we click on text or CSV. Now the second one should be this one right here. Then we click on import. So we have it as well. So quickly for checking purpose, we can click on transform data. Okay, if you look at the columns here, they are actually 100% all true. Everything is intact. So. Now, let us make one mistake and fix it quickly so that we can learn from it in case it happens to us next time. So what if mistakenly 
we clicked on this instead of us to open this up and click on close and load and what we did was just to hit this one and automatically something weird happened what you don't want to happen happened and this is where you found yourself now our data has been loaded to this particular sheet what do we do hmm that is the question what do we do so there is nothing we can do are you serious uh, we can do something so if i hover over here right now we can step into this particular place and this particular three dots here when i click the three dots this is what i have opened you get it right now so i'm gonna go back again so we are here so we mistakenly hit the close and load and it loaded the data into this particular worksheet for us and what we want is not to have our data here because we want to create something entirely different so what you can do is to actually hover over here do not du uh, double click it step into it right and click on these three dots here then you have this particular load tool so click on it and it brings you back right here okay you have to perform the same thing click on only create connection and add this to the data model right here then click on ok so now it's going to prompt you with this you can read through it but to me i think i know what it is that is asking for i'm just going to click on ok now it has pushed data away from the worksheet into our power pivot for us that is crazy right so let's get more tables in so go to data and here we'll click on this and now we take the routes here Okay, this is what it is. If you are very much satiated that your tables are very okay, 100%, and you think like you don't need to go to Power Query, you can buy, you can just buy cut that Power Query of a thing by clicking over here and click on Load To, and this is gonna straight up load this to the Power Pivot for us. So do the same thing again over here. Then the question you might be having in mind is like, what if you want to make changes? That doesn't mean what we have done now does not push the data into Power Query for us. It does, but it's just that we only don't want to go through that route to get this done. So to verify this now, double click here, and here we're gonna have this opened inside Power Query. Can you see that? Now, this is what it is. So let us quickly close it and bring in our last table for the day. Oh, sorry. Here we go. So the last table is this particular fact table right here. And right now, I would love to open this inside Power Query because this is where our transformation will start. So finally, we are here. So don't forget to check across all your columns and make sure they are 100% correct. So if they are 100% correct, that is cool. Then if you have any error, try to check what kind of error is it. If it's something you can replace or if you have empty rows, try to check if it's something that you can replace, then go ahead and do it. So before we go, there is something I want to tell you. So let's come over here now. Okay. When you load your data in, this is what you're going to have. You are going to have a valid. So valid, you're going to have empty. I'm going to have error, right? So they are, going, they are going to be expressed in percentages. So let's say here you have 50% of what? Of um, valid. Then you have... 20% to be empty and over here you have 30% to be what to be error then you go you have different columns right or different data types you have date data type you have um number number can be a whole number or it can be a decimal number so you have text right then you have um true and false so those are the common data types that we have so on that date we have date and time and all of that so when you have this situation you know when you are faced with this situation right here that you have 50 percent 20 percent and 30 percent so what we should be expecting to have is actually 100 
uh, percent like this. So if we could not get this, and this happened in date column, so there is nothing you can do except if the error you have is actually based on compatibility. Get that right. Now, we have different types of regions and every single region have the way they have their format of date. So the UK date format is different than the US date format. So if the data came in, came, came in the UK date format and your system is set up to US date format, then you are going to have error in some of what? In some of the roles. Just like when you have something like this. For example, you're going to have date like uh, 26th of January 2025. So while someone comes first, January 26, uh, 2025. So this is the kind of date that you will have. So if your date format is supposed to be this particular one here, and now you are having this inside the data, then you're going to have this. So quickly, you need to change your settings. It's very important. You need to change your setting before you can solve this error. Otherwise, if there is no error here and what you have here is just empty, that gives you some percentages. On that date, there is nothing you can do about it. You have to leave it that way as empty. So what does that tell you? That simply tells you that for the transaction that happens on those days, there are no dates recorded for all those transactions. That was why you have them empty. Even if other columns carries data. You get it. So if it happens in a particular place where you have number, I want you to know now that null is equals to zero. Blank is equals to zero. So anywhere you have null and blank on that number is actually equal to zero. That is what you need to understand. So which means if you have empty on that way you have number and you don't know the actual number to fix on it, you can leave it that way. That means there is no number recorded for such transaction. Then you leave it that way. Leave it to be that empty of 20%. Then you don't even need to replace it with anything. But let us come to where we have text right now. So on that text, so you can actually always replace your text with different way like now when you have uh, a column that has gender so now the gender should be male or it should be female male or female it of it so if it is not male it should be female or it should be order so if you now have your gender column to carry 50 percent you know um validity and there are many percentages given to error and this. So first of all, what you need to do, you check your data type. If it is on text, then definitely you need to know that there are no records for other genders or for male and female on those particular places where you have empty cells. So what you need to do now is to actually replace value. So how do you do that? You actually go, I'm going to show you how to do that very soon. So you go and replace value. You can replace value with on specified or not specified. Add out of it. So now this is a text base. You have a choice to replace what is not there and decide to give it a name. But on that number and date, you cannot replace them except you know the actual one. So when you replace the rows that are empty here, if you replace that with unspecified, all the rows that are empty would be filled up with unspecified. So what about it? If you try to replace date where you have no date in a particular column, all the rows, if it is actually 50 rows that do not have date, and you replace it with maybe something like this, or 2004, the 50 rows are going to be filled with 2004. What if what you should be having in those rows and not 2004, all true, but distinct dates. That is going to be crazy, right? That was why I said, don't even bother. Leave it that way. That is how it should be. But on a text, when you do this, you're going to have 50 
unspecified or not specified, whatever. So now you understand it. Let me take you back here. Now, if such thing happen, we don't have such you know problems right here. So let's say such thing happen and you want to replace it. I said you cannot replace on date. You cannot replace on time, except you know the actual one. And it will be very hard for you to fix it. So speak to the person that gave the data to fix it before you can actually do anything right here. Otherwise, leave it that way. So for number, the same thing happens on number. You can replace number, except you know the actual number. But for where you have text, for example, like on this particular part, all you have to do is to right click and go to what? Go to replace value. So when you go to replace value now, you find what you want to replace. If it is null, you use null and you replace it with whatever you want to use to replace it right here. You understand? So let's just go to a particular place like this one now and click on this. And here we see replace value. So our replace value here would actually be finding date and replacing it with date. You can't find text over here. So when you're trying to find text, automatically you're going to have this particular error which tells you enter a date value. So which means you cannot replace a particular blank rows in this column with unspecified. That is not going to happen. So immediately you do that, if you successfully do it, you are actually going to have this particular column not to be the data type it has right now. So it's going to automatically be what we call um, text. So and you need to have a date data type right here. So I hope you get this right now. Very simple and easy, not something complicated. Okay, everyone, let us do some transformation of our data right now. So when I talk about transformation, I'm talking about, you know, transforming the existing column into something different in order for we to have what we want out of it. For example, we have this particular column called age. So in this particular age column, the age ranges from, let's say from 10, 15, 16, 20, or 50, 70, 80, and on and on. You understand, this list keeps going. So we might have age into almost 50 different numbers. So there is no way we can make sense with that particular huge list of age you no know, uh, rows what we can do now is to create another column and that column will be called age group so for the age group we're going to group this age into zero to like 10 for example so we group from 11 to 20 and now we group from 21 to 30 so this will definitely make a lot of sense. So anytime you do something like this in Excel, we call it grouping and automatically we are doing transformation, not cleaning right now. You get it. Let me show you a perfect example of it. Over here, we are in the Power Query environment. Inside Power Query, what we have here actually is our demographic on so on the demographics we have this particular age uh, highlighted if i click on it right now you can see my age start from 16 and it ended in what it ended in 17 right here so if i go over to view i can click on column profile so under my column profile here so we can now see we have distinct value of 46 46 you understand unique value of 12 12 different unique values so this is what it is you might not understand this but don't worry you will definitely understand it so what is this saying under age 54 we have uh three distinct value so under age 37 we have four distinct value so that for that we cannot make sense of this when we are trying to create our chart. So the only thing to do now is to actually go ahead and create what? And create age group, to group this age, just like what I've shown you previously. Okay, to do that right now, we have to come to add column. We have two way to get it done. We can do it on conditional column. When you click on your conditional column, you're gonna have something like this. I'll show you how to get it done. Or still, you can click over the same add column. You come to custom column and you can make use of custom column. So right now, we want to make things easy for ourselves. Let us use GPT to actually have the 
M code rating for us 100% and bring it up right here and make it work. Okay, we are here on GPT. So the, what I'm gonna do right now is to have a prompt here. So the prompt says, uh, M code to group. So I can just say write, write an, so write an M code to group age in number using this example, zero to 19, 20 to 29, and uh, as soon, okay, let us use and over here. So, and as soon as you get to 50 to 59, group orders into, so we have to step this back here. Yeah. So group orders into 60, above 60 rather, group orders into above 60. So the column to group is age. So the column to group is age. We are trying to be very specific right here. The column we want to group is age so that it will know which column is gonna pick and start creating the group on. So I'm gonna hit my enter key and let us see what it's gonna to give to us. So if you look at it right now, what we are using is actually free version of it. I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing in the paid version after this. So I'm gonna copy this right now. Let me show you how to get it done in a paid version. So over here, I open the new GPT. I select GPT-4 from here, the list, GPT-4. And what I'm gonna do, I can load in my what? I can load in that particular table that is gonna be used for it. So the table is here. You can actually see, um, there is, I have, I have a column called age. I want you to group the age column using this example. So over here, we give it our example. So it's gonna be from zero to 19 comma, then from uh, 20 to 29. And as soon as it gets to 50 to 59, group orders into, into what? Group orders into above. 60. So we hit our enter key. So we have just given it the prompt and already we have our data right in here. So the system is gonna go into our data and start doing this. So but one thing is missing right here. Uh, part, uh, uh, this particular AI, GPT, wouldn't know how to group this. Maybe it's gonna be DAX, SQL, you know, uh, Excel formulas and all of that. So because we are not very specific about that. so. You have to leave it to have it done for you the way it likes first. And after that, the next thing you have to do is to make sure you tell it that you want this done using M code in Power Query. So let us type it here. So if you look at it, there is no specific code written for us. That was because we are not very much specific. So now do it in mQuery, uh, in Power Query M code. So if I hit my enter key right now, it's gonna start grouping this for us in M code. So just give it some time. So now it's writing the M code for us. So this is a different way entirely from what we have before, but something very much similar. It depends on what you really want. I would love to use this one and show you example and use the one we have from uh, the free version, which is 3.5 and show you their difference. Okay, so this is the one from four. Let us go to the one with three. So this is the one from 3.5. I can copy this one now and let's go to our Excel version here. So we are here, I can paste in this one here. So I've pasted this in, I can click on okay, and automatically it has it grouped for us. 
So if I open up this particular place right now, you can see 0 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59. And as soon as it gets to 50 to 59, it stopped and it grouped any other years or whatever age under above 60. Can you see that? Okay, let's see what will this one give to us when we actually pick the one coming from the uh, plus version. So I'm going to copy this and quickly we go back here. We insert a new word, insert a new uh, custom column. Inside this new custom column, if I have this pasted here now, already I have an error here, right? So what is this error for? We can remove it and that error is gone. It's just the comma that is just some kind of a mistake that anybody can make. So if I go ahead and hit my OK right now, this would give me an error. So what do we do to fix this right now? OK, this error is saying that um, add call, add, uh, add, added custom is not recognized, whatever. So click over here and fix it. So once we are here, we do not even want to see any of this. So just remove this particular part. So come over here and remove from the closed bracket here. Remove it. Then we are left with something like this. Go ahead and click on your OK. And it works just like the previous one. Can you see? So now, let me let you know one thing. Before GPT, both the free version and the paid version can do something very awesome for you. You need to know much about your codes a little bit. At least get hold of at least 50 to 60% of it. Then the remaining 40 will actually you know, be very easy for you to get hold of when you start using the AI, GPT, either the free version or the paid version. So right now we have both of them right here. What happens if we decide to click over here right now? So we are no more looking at it under the custom column. Instead, we are here under the conditional column. So what is this doing? We, this is what we can do ourselves over here as well. So it's actually adding this particular, you know, uh, rows every single time and tells you like, okay, you know what? If this age, uh, age here uh, is going to an operator is, is less than or equal to 19. So I want you to group it to 0 to 19 and the same age is less than or equal to 29. So group it from 20 to 29. So it's giving you some intervals before this grouping happened. So because we actually stopped it at when it gets to 50 to 59, automatically it doesn't add anyone any longer and it grouped this to above 60. You get it right now. So now we can choose the one we want to keep. Both of them gave us the correct version of what it is that we're looking forward to seeing. So I'm going to truncate this one from here. So I'm going with this particular one. So over here now, I can name this one age group. So name this one age group, that is better. So this is exactly how you can actually have this created. But mind you, we are not cool with the data set we have right now. So we have to be very specific. Our data type we have is supposed to be uh, a text, not number and text, whatever. So click over here we can click over text and that is the data type we can use to those of you that doesn't know what data types you know uh, are all about if you click over here right now those are the different data types that we have this one is decimal 1.2 then the currency right here means the currency or uh, data type for dollar then if you're living in the UK, you might have something different in China. You know, it depends on what region your system is set, you know. Um, so for a whole number is one, two, three, like this. For percentage, you have this. And you can just study the icons you have for every single data types right here. So with that, if you actually open a file inside Power Query, you, at a glance, you can tell if it has the correct data types or not. You understand? That is exactly what it is. So we have just done this and it's very, very, you know, okay and it's working fine for us. So let's see the next one. Right, we need to do some transformation inside our fact table. So what we're going to do, we have, um, we have time. So we have, um, this time has both AM and it has PM. So we want to extract it out of here. 
And for the main time itself, right here, the main time column itself, what we want to do to it is to actually extra, um, group it. Create some grouping. So when we group it, we want to group it to like uh, between three, uh, maybe PM to like five PM. So we want to have some grouping for we to know how many, you know, all services we render between this particular time to this time right here. Okay. And aside that, so we have, um, we have bus capacity like this. Bus capacity. So this bus capacity, what it means is that for every single bus, it has its capacity. Maybe the passengers that the bus can actually commute at a particular time is actually 20. So we want to see if this particular bus uh, for, for a particular trip, if the whole trip has 20 people or not. So with that, we want to compare it to how many trip for a particular time, within a particular time here, how many persons do we have per bus? So do we fill this particular 20 capacity or less? Then with that, we're going to create another grouping or category in this case that we call utilization you know, category. So where we're going to have well utilized, so we're going to have uh, under utilized and uh, above utilized or overutilized, depends on what you want to call it. So we want to create something like this. It's a transformation we have to do to our fact table. Let's get it. So we are right here. And the first thing we have to do is to click on the fact table, which is where we are right now. So if we scroll a little bit right here, we can see we have our time and the data type we have right here is the time data type. If I click on it right now, you can see it's on time. Look at the icon. And for calendar, oh, the icon here is actually given to date. That is exactly what it is. Okay, going back here right now, what we want to extract from here is extracting the PM and the AM. That doesn't mean we have to totally destroy it from here, right? We want to keep it but we want to still get out of it so that we can use it separately when actually creating visual to give some insight to the end users to know how to actually channel resources that they have. Okay, to have this done right now, what I'm going to do is this. Highlight the column that you want to affect. So try to know the difference between this here and as well this particular place. This particular one would add a new column for you, while this one will actually overwrite what you have right here. Now, let's go to this add. So when we get to add, you can see where we have extract. Click on extract. And what we want to extract right now, we want to check if there is consistency. Otherwise, we can use other method to do it. Actually, there is consistency of just two uh, letters, a, PM and AM, they're just two. So I'm going to say the last characters. For the last characters, I click on this and I'm going to specify how many characters do I want to remove. I can now say two, right? Then I'll click on OK and I have this pulled out for me. And that's what I can do to get it done again is if I take this off, I can highlight the column and I'm going to go right here. We go to um, home and from home, we can see where it says split. So this split, we can click on by the limiter right here. On we can uh, we can check position. So if I choose by delimiter, it's gonna ask me for which delimiter do I have. So if you look at it right now, we have a space delimiter. Click over here, and it gives you a space delimiter, and you actually specify where that particular space is. You do this specifically when you have space in multiple places. So you have to specify if you want to actually start extracting something from the left space the middle space or the right space. So right now the space we have is just at a single place. So we can just click on OK. So right now, this is what we have. We have under time right here. We still have the original version kept for us the way it is without affecting it, right? So can you see it now? This is what we have. So it depends on which one you want to go by. I've shown you two ways to have it done. 
So right now that we have got 10 days, the next thing we have to do right now is to change this one to something different. Let's change the name. I'm going to do um, Operation Moment. Okay, we have this now. All right, we are right here again under this particular part time. So this one now we can name it just time, take off this and hit the enter key. So we have to create grouping for this one right here. So we need to write a prompt to have this done. It is time to group this particular column. So how do we group it? We don't have to write a single M code for this. We just need to go to GPT and ask GPT to do it for us. Let's get it. So we are right here on GPT. And if you look at it, we are still on GPT 3.5. We don't have to do this in GPT 4. Do I have that version 4 right here that I can actually switch to? But I'm going to use 3 so that every other person can actually follow along if you don't have money to buy this. So let's look at the prompt we have right here. So for the prompt, I said I have a column called time. I have to be very specific to map out my column from my uh, table. So I want to segment the time column in a new column with the interval of 3 hours segment. So it's Okay, segment it in 12 hours. So we have 24 hours. We want ours to be in 12 hours. So my table name is Fact Table Ridership. So use this example. So we gave it an example. Always cite an example and give it that example so that uh, the AI will know how this should be some kind of crafted. So we have something like this. And already we have the code generated here. I can go ahead and copy this. Then from here now, I will locate my so quickly go to add column and click on the custom column here. So let's just paste in this here. So mind you, you might end up generating yours. It will not give you exactly what you want. You have to keep on, you know, working on the prompt over and over again before it gives you this. So if you have any issue with that, I already have the uh, prompt I've used in every single step of this video. Then you can go through it and check it out. Okay. Now, what we can do now is to come over here and name this one time group. So for time group, we can just click on OK and we have our time grouped for us. So 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. If we come over here, it's 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. So we can scroll down, 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 down. So or we can open up here to check what we have. So we have both p.m. and a.m. So we have three different segmentation, 10, 12, and 5, so a.m. and p.m. So the next thing we have to do right now is to actually convert this data type into text, and this is what we have. Okay, we have done this. The next thing is for we to actually look at how we can create the other one, which is we're trying to look at if our buses are overutilized, underutilized, or well utilized. So how do we do that? So on this particular column here, it is the numbers of riders, which is how many persons had ever ride with us per trip. So here we have 34, we have 50, we have 40 and stuff like that. So we want to do something different from what we have here. So if we go to this particular buses right here now, we have the capacity of every single buses. So this bus one has 30 capacity. This one has, you know, 60 capacity. This one has 40 capacity. So how can we do something using this and the other column we have right here? Okay. First of all, click on this and go to home. From home, we have to merge the two columns together. That column coming from the buses, which is our capacity. We bring it over here to the fact table. To do this now, we can click on Merge Queries. And there we go. We have this. So go ahead and click on your second table, this one. So from the second table, we want to find what is actually some kind of um, existing in both tables that, some kind of, that are relevant to connect the two tables together and pull the information we want. So we have bus ID 
to boss ID here. And if that matches very well, it's going to give you here 200% of 200%, sorry, 200 of 200 rows rather. So that is 100% match. So let us select a different one. So you can see right here is giving us 40 of 200 because this is not the same ID. So this one is the record ID. This one is the boss ID. So we have to do this to match. Okay. Once we have this done, we don't need any adjustment again. Go ahead and click on OK. There you go. We have something like this. The next thing is for you to click over here and take off this particular use original column name as prefix. Then deselect everything from here and just check this capacity right here. Then click on OK. So we can now see line by line, we have 60 capacity and 34 is utilized right here. You get it? This is what it is. So the next thing we have to do right now is to write a prompt that can actually create that particular some kind of uh, segmentation for us. So where we're going to check if we are overutilizing or underutilizing and stuff like that. But before that happens, we need to create a percentage right here first ourselves. We can do it. We don't have to give it to GPT any longer. So let's do it. What we can do right now is for we to open up this particular ad and click on custom column here. So from custom column, what we're going to do is to actually divide our numbers of what? Of riders. Click on this and click on insert. Then divide using that slash. Don't worry if you have this error, that is not the problem. That was because you have not given it the second column. So let us scroll down. Another way to insert a column is to double click. Automatically, it will be inserted for you. So right now I'm going to name this one um, what should I give it? Utilization percentage. PCT for percentage. And I go ahead and click on OK. So we have this in decimal. We have to make sure it's in percentage. So what we need to do is to change the data type. So go over here and click on this. And here we go. We hold the percentage, right? And this is what it is. So if you look at it, anywhere we have 40 for the capacity and over here we have 40, which means it's 100%. So this is fully occupied. We have 40 capacity for our bus and 40 people inside the bus. This is great. So let's keep going and show you what this is. So here we have 60. So if you look at it now, this is 60 capacity and 40 people occupy the bus. So over here, we have 120. So the 120 is also a result of what? The capacity we have right here is actually 40 capacity. And we have 20 or 48 people, which is extra eight persons inside the bus. So which means this particular route needs to be some kind of uh, giving a new bus or a bigger bus, whatever. So this is what we're trying to do. Trying to segment this and know which of those routes which of those bosses are overutilized, underutilized, and well utilized. With the percentage right here, we can do much with it. If we open it up right now, you can see we have lots right here. So when you have lots of rows containing different values, there is no way you can create chart with this. What you can do is to make sense with it by creating a segmentation, right? So we have to go to GPT for that. Over here, I copied a prompt I've written already. So I'm going to go to GPT and uh, let's click. We can always create a new one, a new chart. So I'm going to take it up from four so that we shouldn't confuse ourselves. We use the free version. You can use the four if you need to. So let us look at what it is that I have right here. I said I have a column called utilization percentage. That was the column name I just we just created. So that contained percentages. I want to segment the percentage into three. One, if the utilization percentage is less than 0 0.5, it should be underutilized. If the percentage uh, or utilization percentage is greater than 0 0.9, it should be overutilized. Otherwise, well utilized. Let's see what it is. Okay, we can regenerate. Oh, let me check my Wi-Fi. This is crazy. 
Okay, the prompt is going. So right now we already have this. So let us check the first one and see what we have right there. So here it's giving us this. Well utilized. Okay. This one is giving us based on cell. It's thinking we're gonna do this in Excel. So no. But over here is giving us the actual thing we want. We can actually go ahead and copy this. Let's go to Excel right now. And now we have to create another custom column here. So we paste this in here. So this is going to be a name. This name can't be here. Let us take it off. So we've taken the name off there. Okay, we'll leave the name utilization category. So what is wrong? What is wrong? We have this equals cut this away. So if we have an error, we need to fix this. So, so, so let's go back here and regenerate. Oh, sorry, I think we are not specific. So we can tell it this is going to be in Power Query. So generate M um, code for Power Query. So be very much specific, then it will write it in a Power Query format for you. So we can copy this now and go back. Over here, we paste this in. I believe this one would have an error, though it's okay right now. Now it says your data source. Let's some kind of click on okay right here. And it, it gives us this. What we can do right now is to just click over here to open it back. And right now we need to give it the source. The source should be our table name. Fact table underscore ridership. So let's see if this one solves the problem. So it does, but it's giving us error. So let me show you how this error or what this error is. So just click on the error. So when you have an error, you can copy the error you have to GPT. And here we go. We have copied the error. So we go down to GPT and we paste in the error over here. And it should actually look for a way to fix this for us. So if, like it doesn't, it's giving us the same thing. So what if I say use if? So I'll just go to my first prompt here. The first prompt here, I can edit it. So over here, I'm going to say use if and if else. Then generate a power query m code so we can do this again so it's still doing this for us so what we can do right now is to just copy this now and let's see if we can walk around with the arrow okay i'm gonna click over here now so right here i paste this new one in so go to the top here what if I go over here? This one is let is still asking. There will be a circular reference if I do this. Replace your actual data cells. Okay. What we do is to come back here. My table name is fact table underscore ridership. So it has used the table name for us. So let us see if there will be circular you no know, reference problem here right now. So we go back to Excel. We do this and we paste this right here. Let's click on OK.
So we still having the same issue, telling us that this is not found. Let us look at the spellings and everything looks just like the same thing. So what I, why are we having this? So I can just do this. Click on OK. So that fixed it for us. You can see what I've done right there. So I have just done this. I'm going to take it back again. Now, when we are here, it's going to open this for us. But for we to do it again to hold, get the full understanding of what I've done to fix that error, so we can do it all over again by clicking on custom column here. And from custom column, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in right here. So if I click on OK right now, I have this error, right? So to fix this error, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the way the M code uh, was written for me by GPT. So click over here right now. Once you click over here, I don't want to display this particular starting point, right? So I'll take it off and I'll take off this particular part as well from it. This doesn't work in every single code generated for you but you need to know when you need to do this and when you don't need to do it. So what we have done right here right now is saying if this particular utilization percentage right here is this, we want this. If it is this, this, otherwise give us this. Then we just go ahead and click on OK. And now we have it. So let us look at where we have overutilized. Overutilized is where we have 100% right here. Overutilized, overutilized. This is getting it wrong. Overutilized shouldn't be this. This should be well utilized. So that means we have to go and make adjustments. So we can go over here now. So under here, if by if we go by our prompt, what we can do right here is to actually fix it by how our prompt actually came. So let's do it. So if it is this, it should be uh, this is less than this on the utilize. So I want to check my prompt and ascertain that. So 0 0.5 should be underutilized, 0 0.5 underutilized. Then 0 0.9 should be overutilized. So well utilized. 0 0.5 underutilized, 0 0.9 overutilized. Let's see, 0 0.9 underutilized, 0 0.9 should be overutilized, and others should be this. So click on OK. So I want to select this, go to overutilized. So all of our utilized are within 100%. So 40 here to 40, okay. So click over here. Let's click over here. Let's go over here. Then it should be less than here. This should be is less than, not greater than, less than, then click OK. So now, can you see now? This is what we have just fixed. So we have fixed this particular place where it is 100 because when it is 100%, which means we have 40 capacity and we have 40 people as well in the bus. So just try as much as you could to be very patient to check around and see if there is any error fix it. So what happened here was that this particular place here was not the way it should be. It was on actually greater than. So we fix it to if it is less than. So both here and here should be less than. Then with that, we would have this some kind of fixed normally the way it should be. So now we have created this column. What name can we give this particular column right now? Let's double click over here and name it to boss utilization. category. Here we go. So we can convert this one to text. 
So now to text. So here we go. What about this? Okay, this is what we need to do on the fact table as a transformation and we have just achieved that. So try as much as you could to replicate exactly the same thing you have learned right here on your own personal dashboard or report, whatever you're creating. So GPT will help you to do lots of things as soon as you know how to write the prompt. Let us look at how we can create a custom date table for our project. Now with custom date table, you can actually have several columns that you can use, which the default date table that Excel will generate for you does not have. For example, we have the weekday. So the weekday is not part of what Excel would actually give to you. We can customize our quarter if you want to do that. So we can do several manner of things using the date table. So we're going to create a custom date table from the existing data that we have. And it will be very much dynamic every single time there is new data that comes in. Okay. Aside this, we are going to create on that table. That table is called calculation. So the calculation table is what we're going to store in our DAX. I've told you we're going to be using DAX to actually create some certain things right inside our data. So those two tables are very important. Let's create them. So we are right here. The very first thing I'm going to do to create my data table is to duplicate this particular table right here. So which table am I to duplicate? The fact ridership. Okay. So right here, just right click and duplicate. So we have created a duplicate of this. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to select the date part and right click and say remove other columns. So I'm left with one single column, which is this particular column right here. So quickly before I do anything, I can just go right here and do dim underscore date table. So now I have my date table. So this date table has a link to our fact table. So anytime we have new date here, it would automatically reflect right here. But we can just have all of this date here. What we can do is to right click again. And here we have where it says duplicates. Uh, duplicate call. No, 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 not this one. Let's see. Do we have it here? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We have this particular remove duplicates. So we have removed the duplicates, which means what we have right now is a unique list, right? So we now have 30 rows. Instead of 200 rows, we now have 30 rows. Okay. So we can start adding more columns to this. So the very first column I'm going to add now is extracting the years. So over here, you can go to add column. And from there, you go to date and you go to year and we can add the year. So we have created a year from our data. If I click on it right now, it's going to give us two years of data. Can you see it? So if you need to add a new column, make sure you highlight this one. This is the model of all the columns you're going to be creating. Then let's go over here. And now I go to month. I go to name of month. So for my name of month, I have it in the full format. So what I'm going to do right now is to actually make sure I change the format. So if I highlight this, the next thing I'm going to do is to go to transform right here. On that transform, what I need to do is to locate where we have this particular format right in. And the format should be, um, do we need to go to format? Extract. Yeah. Extract. So we are going to extract the first character. So for the first character, we extract the first three characters right here. So here we go. So we have the shorter form of our month. Okay. So we do the same thing by coming over here now and we go over here. We go over to month. We go to month. So this one creates a number. Oh, sorry. This is the mistake you would always do when working with data, specifically when trying to do transformation and cleaning. So what I've done right now was that I have replaced the existing one with this particular one right here. So how can we get this done? So what we can do right now is to remove this particular step. So I make sure anytime we're here and we want to add a new column, we are always on the add column, not on the transform. So we are on the add column here. 
So click over here now and go to months, click on months, not month number this time around. So what is, what is this giving us? So this particular one is giving us the number of this particular month. Then we're going to use this one to sort this one so that we can have it from January down to December. So what I'll do now is actually come over here and uh, do month number. So with month number, I have this. So we click over here again. Now we can go to this same add column, click over here. We have the week. So end of week, start of week, week of month and this. So instead of this, what I'm going to do is to go to this particular um, day here. So on that day, we have name of day and we have day of week and we have day. When we click on day to extract day from here, so name of day. So name of day looks like this. We don't want the full format of it. What we can do is to go to transform again. And from transform, we click on the extract. And we extract the first character and we take the first three. Then we click on OK. Right? So let's go back right here. Quickly leave that transform to add column. And we go down right here again. And we go to day. When we go to week, here is that think week of month so we go to day so day of week so the day of week now gives zero to sunday and gives six to saturday you understand so let's say you want to some kind of create weekday and uh week uh weekend this will definitely give you that particular possibility to do it without even going to gpt is very simple and easy so what you can do right now is to go to what? Go to add column and do this particular conditional column right here. So scroll down a little bit. So over here now we can just type week type. So for the week type, we actually locate the week number, day of week, I'm gonna convert it later. If it is equals to zero, that is Sunday. So in my country is gonna be week, end so we add another one if day of week is equals to now for saturday is six is equals to six then that means it's still weekend otherwise so categorize every other numbers into with this so we have this we can click on okay so can you see it now if i open it up we have weekday and weekend. So we can just click over here and we do text. So over here, I'm going to name this one to week number for a purpose. We're going to be using this in uh, the power pivot later after all. So this is what we have. So now we have just gotten this right here and you can add more columns depends on what you want to do and how complex your analysis is. You can add several columns right here to support your analysis. Okay, we are cool with this. The next thing we're going to do right now is to go over here and click on this, then click on close and load to and we select how we want this to be loaded. So only connection, then click on OK. Okay, we have this right now. I told you we have one more table to be created and that table would only store our calculations or DAX calculation for us. So what do we do? Let's go quickly to this part and we click on data. You click over here. Let's go to here under from other sources. Scroll down. You see where it says blank query. Click on the blank query. That blank query will, will be open inside Power Query. The blank query opened in Power Query. <laughs> Such amazing lines. So now here we can name this blank query to anything we want to name it to. But before then, let's come over here now and just put one over here and hit the Enter key. So we have one here right now, one. So in this one, we have to convert into a table. So click over here to convert it to a table. So we have it converted into a table. And this is what we have. So the column, we can name it some kind of uh, store or calculation. So we just, just leave it to number. 
because what we have here is just a whole number. It's not really important. I'm just trying to do that. So we can just say calculation. Or we can say, yeah, calculations right here. So we have this. So the next thing is for we to still load this and uh, we direct it to go to our module right here. We do this, click on OK. Now we have everything right here. Nothing is actually inside our worksheet in this workbook. Everything is in the power pivot. So when we come back, I'm going to show you how they look like and what we can do with them and how we can make sense with them. Okay, let us look at the next step we are going to take for this particular dashboard creation in Excel using advanced, you know, form. Now we're going to be using the power pivot. I told you that is the next thing right now. So power pivot. So the power pivot, what does the power pivot do? The power pivot helps you to actually store large data. So it has what we call large data capacity. So when we talk about large data capacity for the power pivot, so power pivot allows you to process and analyze data set that are far beyond the role limits of standard Excel worksheet. So you can work with millions of rows of data with improved performance. So when using this particular power pivot right here, now look at this particular part that says advanced calculation. For the advanced calculation, we are talking about, you know, DAX calculation, which is data analysis expression called DAX. So with DAX, you can actually create some kind of advanced calculation for time intelligence and any other calculation that the Excel worksheet alone cannot just give you some. And there are some things you can do with DAX that when it comes to Excel, function you have limitations right so let us check this particular part called data modeling or creation right here so power pivot allows you to create data models which are collections of tables that related to each other without some kind of you know denormalizing your table using VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP or index and match to bring your tables together and have a very giant table that is not what it is. So this relationship makes it possible to create complex report from multiple data sources. You understand? So like the table we have right now is like five different tables. So those five different tables are independent. We don't have to join them together on one solid table using either the VLOOKUP, the XLOOKUP, the index, and uh, the match function right here. No, that is not what it is. So we don't have to do that. So we want the fact table to stand on their on its own and the dimensional table would stand on their own and we're gonna create relationship using power pivot. So efficient data storage. So let us talk about that. Efficient data storage. So using this particular power pivot right here, we're gonna have efficient data storage. So power pivot uses, you know, uh, some kind of a different matching or columnar database technology, which comprise, which comprises the data and reduces the file size. So making it more efficient to store and process large data. You understand? So that is one of the advantage of that. So when we talk about the time intelligence right here, the time intelligence here is actually creating calculation based on time. So we have same period last year, you know, um, different calculation based on time would definitely happen better when you use DAX to actually have your calculation done. And this always is something that most people will tell you that I only know this in Power BI. So why are you bringing this to Excel? So this is actually in Excel in case you're wondering how this could be done in Excel. Don't worry, stay tuned. I'm gonna teach you how all this could be done. So lastly, what we have on our list is actually the Power Pivot or the, power, uh, the Pivot Table and as well the charts creation. So with all of this, you create pivot table, you create charts, you do all manner of things, just like what you can do with 
ordinary Excel when you have your data inside Excel worksheet. So now with all of this right now, the next thing we're gonna do is to look at how we can actually create our connections and start creating our charts to create that beautiful dashboard you had been waiting for. So we are back here again. It is time for we to do practical based on how we can create our relationship. The very first thing you have to do is to go to the top ribbon right here. So click on it and have this. No, right. So when you click on data, you're going to have this icon that look greenish. So when you hover over it to what you have is go to the power pivot window. So if you can't find this, so you forget this, click on the power pivot itself right here. So once you click it, you're going to see the giant icon that says manage. So right now we're going to click on manage and we just clicked on manage. We are about to manage our tables and see how things can go. So the same thing we have in Power Query is what we have here is just that this particular interface is a bit different and what it does is different from what Power Query does. We can do transformation and clean right here. We can only do computation, writing docs right in this particular part. Okay. If I click over here now, I have under table, right here, under table, right here, the same thing. So if you look at it, the percentage is not much showing as percentage right here. So let us find a way to actually have it fixed. So do we have that particular privilege here? Let's click on this. And over here, we don't have the privilege. That doesn't really spoil anything. It's still correct. It's showing in decimal uh, form. So if I click over this particular place right now, here will be the date we have created, the table we've created, and this one contains one single row, that is the calculation uh, table we've created. So with this right now, what are we gonna do with this? Let's click on this diagram view here. On the diagram view, it has given us every single table that we have. First of all, I'm gonna locate my fact table and bring it to the bottom right here. So you can actually uh, make it bigger, extend it and open everything up. So if I scroll to the right hand corner here, I have two other tables right here. One is my date table and the other is the calculations table we have added. So what I'm going to do now is to set up all my tables at the top right here. Exclude this one. Remember this one has nothing to do with what we are doing. It's just a table to help us to, you know, DAX. So the next thing we have we have to do right now is to start linking our tables together. So how do we link these particular tables together? We link it by using the IDs existing in them. How do you know about these IDs if it is existing in one table and the other? So right now, if we look into here now, we have boss ID. So we have to look into this particular table, this one, this one, and this one, where can we find boss ID? So we can find our boss ID right here. So we can drag this boss ID to this one and we create a relationship called one-to-many relationship. Remember when we talked about the dimensional table and the fact table, I told you the fact table contains duplicate values, right? Multiple values repeated over and over again. While the dimensional table, like this particular table right now, only contains one single unique record. If you want to see if that is true, now over here we are into the boss table. We can go back to this particular data view right here, and we click on the boss table right here. 
Then if you look at it now, if I open it, drop down here, this one is actually appearing once. We can't find it twice. So to prove that's right or wrong, you just select this one. And here you go. We'll have one record for this, right? And the idea of this particular boss is actually one. Let us clear the filter from here. So clear filter. So we've cleared the filter. So you can just do this. So we have boss ID. The boss ID for one is boss one. So if you want to verify how many times this boss ID appeared in this particular table right now, what you do is to locate your boss ID from here. So this is the boss ID. So if I click on it right now, I can select just only the one and click on OK. So now we have it up appeared multiple times, like four good times right here. This is what it is. So this one contains duplicate values. We call it transactional table, fact table, or sales table. Depends on what you want to call it. All right. So now I can clear the filter away from here. It's very important. Just try as much as you could to clear the filter. So let's go back to our diagram. So now that we have understand how it goes. So where we have one shows is the one side of our table. And where we have this particular asterisk or star shows that this is the main side of our table. Okay. Let us look at the ID we have right here, which ID will be connected to this one here. So we have rider ID. So for the rider ID now, where can we find the rider ID from? So we need to locate that. So the rider ID, rider, rider, rider. So we have to be patient, take our time to get it done. So we have route ID. For the route ID here, we can move it and connect it to this particular one here. So to make things easy, let us move this one now here and move this one away from there to here. And now this one is here. We can just do this. Now they are connected together using the ID that is existing with them. So now this is the one side to this particular one. So it's giving you one to many relationship. So which means this one does not have direct relationship to this particular table right here. You get it right now. So for this table here, we have this rider ID. So we have to locate where we have the rider ID in. So we are looking for rider ID. Do we have it here? No, no, no. Now, so this one should have an ID that is related to orders. So here we have the rider ID. Can you see it now? We can now connect the rider ID to this particular one. And that gives us one to many relationship as well. So this one is related. So what about the date table here? So what can we do with the date table? The date table will be linked to the date we have right here. So just bring the date from here and push it to this particular one here. And this is what it is. So what if your relationship is wrong? For example, you want to delete any relationship. So just right click and click on delete. And that does delete it for you. So it has been deleted. So if what happened is that mistakenly you wanted to drop it over here, but mistakenly is right on this one, let's see what is going to happen. So one thing that is going to happen is this. The system wouldn't tell you that your relationship is wrong until you start using this inside your calculation or creating visual with it. So to correct this now, you can click over here, right click, and you go to what? Go to edit relationship. So under edit relationship, you can now see that this one is date and is actually uh, looking at boss ID, which is wrong. So we have to shift it to this particular date. So now we have fixed the relationship. We can go ahead and click on OK. So now that is solved. So everything here seems to be very okay, 100%. So if you like, you can just bring this over here. This is the many part. So this is the arrangement we have made. So what about this? So there is nothing more to do. We are done from here. Our relationship has been created and this will give us the edge to start creating our visual right now. So if we like, we can return 
to this particular data view. The next thing we have to do right now is for we to create our first pivot table. So we can decide to create our pivot table right here. I'm going to show you how to create your pivot table right here and how to create your pivot table using Noma Excel worksheet. All right, to create a pivot table, just click over here where it says pivot table and you go over here, you create pivot table. Your first pivot table is about to land. You can either use new sheet or use the existing one. So it depends on which one you want to use. Let us use a new sheet right now. And we have just created our first pivot table. And right here, we have all of the tables that we have inside our model. All right. So if we don't want this now, we can always get this one deleted, delete it. And we want to actually use the sheet that is some kind of formatted for it. This is, this is the sheet that is formatted to take our calculations so i can go over to here now then i'll go to insert and i'll click on pivot table so this time around i have pivot table from table range i have from external data source and i have from the data model so we're going to use this if i click on this right now i still have the same thing right here and it's asking me if i want the existing yes of course i do i can actually put it right here and click on ok so we have just created our pivot table and it's still linked to this particular data. All right, let us create our first visual right here using uh, something like the demographics, right? And let's go for occupation or age group. And we want to know how many persons we have for our age group. So we go for the transaction part here. We can pick any of this particular column and drag it into the value area and it's gonna default to count for us. And we have just created our first you know our uh, pivot table and it looks like this it doesn't make any sense right now we're going to come back and see how we can actually control everything using DAX and make things easy for ourselves to start learning DAX from Excel before we actually go into Power BI so if you have known about Power BI before whatever I do right here wouldn't be too complex you know for you it would be very very easy to actually follow along because we are not even going to write complex DAX right in this particular course just to take it very slow, we go with the simple one and we create a very nice looking dashboard. Let's see the next class. Let us see various ways to create calculation in Microsoft Excel. The common one is using Excel function. And uh, formula. Then. Another way to do it that is very easy, which everybody will know when using pivot table is actually to do drag and drop. So drag and drop. Okay. The most advanced one is using the data analysis expression called DAX. So DAX will actually help you to do uh, most complex calculation that this function cannot do and this cannot do. And that is a language mostly used in Power BI. So Excel does not have much huge advanced DAX, but still it can try and create something for you. So we're going to be taking a look at how to utilize all of them right here inside our dashboard creation. So let's get it. So for the, for the very first time we're here, and this is the place we stopped yesterday. So if you look at it now, we have this particular table right here. So it's powered by what we have on our row and what we have on our values. You understand? So first of all, what you need to understand is that uh, there is difference between filter, column, rows and values. So what goes into value should be something that has to do with number number goes into value. So if you put text into a value automatically, it's going to default it into a count for you. Let's try it and see what I'm talking about. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna take off this one from here. Nothing is inside it. So automatically, if I bring in my age group, age group is a text and at default, it to be pulled into the rows, right? So if I take my gender now and click on it, it's going to push it into the row for me. What if I don't want gender to go into this particular row? So we can decide to put gender into the column and we have something like this. So which means if I should actually push in any other value right in now, 
uh, is going to create numbers for me. Let's try it. So right away, I want to push in what is not number into values. Then if you must do that, you have to drag it. You can you cannot actually click and check this and it to push to be pushed in. I'm going to take my age and have it right here. So my age defaulted to number. If I click it, it's going there because it's a number. But this is not making any sense at all because we can't sum our age, right? So what happens if I go for occupation here? Occupation is not moving in into values. That was because it's a text. It's going into a different box. So what if I drag my occupation into here? So my occupation now has been defaulted to count automatically. So this might not be something very clear to you. What if I just get it off? And I'm going to get this one duplicated now. And paste in a duplicate over here. So I'm going to take off this one and take off this one. So if you look at it, if I take off this one as well, and I come back right here, this is my age. My age is a number. Click on the age, automatically it pushed itself into the um, values area. So if I go for a text base like this one here, so it's not going to go there except to push it into here. So right now we have two different things. What are they? So we have count. So we now have what? We now have sum. So for the benefit of those that are just coming into this for the first time, you need to get to understand all of this. Now, when you bring a text into a value area, it will actually summarize it into a count for you. But if you bring in normal values, what you're going to receive is a sum. What if the thing you want to do is to actually sum what you brought here that is a value, or oh, sorry, count what you brought here as a value. So what you can do now is this. You can actually click on this particular part here where it says sum of age. And once you click it, this one pops up. Click over value field settings and you're going to have this. So we can now say like, okay, we don't want this one to sum. Instead, we want to count it. So it has been counted. It's giving us 100 as well. This is what it is, right? Beautiful. Just a good uh, explanation to make you understand what they all stand for. So now you have something like this. So we're not trying to make any sense with this. I'm trying to show you drag and drop what it does, what the road does, and what the column does. So before we go further, let us look at this particular table we have right here. On this table, a lot of things are wrong. So specifically, if we look at this particular part of our pivot table, it's not in any way readable. It's a sum of age. Okay, fine. What about the raw labels? Nobody can tell what these numbers that are grouped, you know, um, is all about. So what can we do to make it cool? And what if we want to actually get off this particular grand total? What can we do to take it off from here? It's very simple and easy. So to get that done, what we can do right now is to go to our top ribbon here. As we are on the top ribbon, we make sure we click on design. So clicking on design opens up this place. We go to the layout. First of all, we want to turn off the grand total. So the grand total, you want to check if it, if it is at the column level or at the row level. So now only for the column, then that is gone from the column level. Then Ctrl Z. If you go ahead and choose the one that says for row, so only for row, the row level has gone, we still have the column level. So Ctrl Z again, what if we want to take them off at the same time? So you go back right here and you can see where it says off for rows and columns and everything is gone. It gives you some kind of clear uh, values right now. So the next thing we might want to do is to some kind of do something around here to make sure this age group shows. So we go ahead and click on our pivot table. We click in here and we go over to design. And from there, we click over this, sorry, our report layout. And we choose this particular one that says tabular form. And once we've done that, here we have it. So if you look at it, the reason why we have this sum here now, sum of age here, is just actually talking about this one right here. So there are so many report layouts you can use. You can go to, for compact, 
you can just check different form out, outline you can see what it gives you it depends on what you are trying to actually you know create so i always love to use the tabular form right here and this cool for me so it gives me the age group telling this uh part to be the age group and the male and female and others values would be right here okay uh, now there are some other settings you would like to know if i some kind of right click on my value area now i can go to where i have the uh, value field setting i can go to this part where it said pivot table options under pivot table options right now we are here what if i want to enter something at where we have empty cell so where we have empty cell is this particular place right now because there is no particular passenger for this age 30 to 39 for order so we can actually put here zero and once we click on ok now we have zero to be there instead of we having it as a blank so it's optional though but sometimes you need it because it's going to mess up your chart you know all that so this is what it is that you need to know about pivot table and all of that so very great right so the next thing is for you to look at this particular part right here we have active and we have all so on the active active will give you only those tables you have used since you start your you know analysis right here using um pivot table while the all will feature all the tables you have inside your uh, model so if you look at it right now we have one two three four five six table but over here on the active we only have few tables like two tables then those are the tables we've actually drag their values and use right here to create all of this you get it so remember you can move this anywhere you like you can pull it and have it at your desired place it's optional it depends on where you want to have it right in so you can replace it back and resize it to what you want it's all your choice it depends on what you want to do with it right so what if you actually click off and it disappears so you just click on one pivot table and it comes back right here if you go ahead and close this and it's your first time you don't know how to bring it back don't be afraid it's going to come back when you click over here you right click and you go to where it says show field list and you're going to have it all the way back right here okay if you forget that way you can actually take it off now we can't find it even if we click right here so go to the top ribbon here and go to pivot table uh, analyze and here you have the field list and it's back 100 percent all right so when you have new data in and you have actually put your new data inside Power Query, you can always come right here and go ahead and refresh to actually pick up all the data you have gotten and all changes will be made to your table. So don't forget, if you want to go back to Power Query, you have to click on Query and Connection. And when you want to see your data inside the Power Pivot, you have to click over here on this icon that is actually green. Or if you can't find this one now, you can actually click on Power Pivot and you have the giant one right here. Okay, when next we meet again, we're going to talk about how to actually use measures right here. Then we're going to write new measure and we're going to manage our measures. I'm talking about writing DAX. Yes, yeah, writing DAX. I'm going to be writing DAX and function, as I've said earlier, function, formula, drag and drop, all of this would be used to create our amazing report or dashboard, depends on what you want to call it. Okay, with this little introductory part of our you know, beginning of the analysis, it will be very easy for you to navigate through your pivot table and start doing some little analysis. Before we properly get started, there are things you need to understand. So remember, we have two different tables right here. So we have the transactional table. So we have the dimensional table. So we can call the fact table our, uh, sorry, the transactional table our fact table. So we can call this our lookup. Table. Okay. Now, the tables we have inside the uh, dimensional table are something like uh, the routes. So we have the date table. 
So we have actually, we have the demographic. Then finally, I think we have the boss. So those are all the tables on the dimensional table. And we now have a giant table called the fact uh, table underscore ridership. Okay, now if you want to count how many bosses you have, you shouldn't make your count over here. Do not make your count over here. Instead, make your count over here. What am I talking about? Remember, every single table we have here are related to this particular giant table we have here, which is our transactional table, ridership, right? Now, we might have like 20 bosses here. Now, at some the time of creating your analysis or based on the filter that is going to be right on it, you want to only see those bosses that are active, that are that had been working, that had actually be, uh, been out there over time, then if you go ahead and do your counting here, what your calculation is gonna give to you is gonna give to you just 20 records. So what if over time, based on what we are looking at the analysis right on, we did not utilize the total numbers of bosses based on the time range or the filter we've selected. So that will gonna be, like wrong calculations. So instead, what you'll be doing, you are going to be counting the IDs that you have right here. For any boss utilized on this particular date, 2025, will be recorded under here. If only just 10 bosses out of 20 is utilized, it will be recorded under here. Your ID will be transferred here with the date involved. But on this particular date here, on 5, 12, 20, 24, then if we utilize all the boxes, it will be recorded right here. So if we now mistakenly go ahead and make our calculation over here right now, it's going to affect what we see on our pivot table, on our report, or on our dashboard. That is why it's always important to create a count, a distinct count, I call it, a distinct count, because this particular table contains multiple values, duplicates, and stuff like that. So 20 bosses are utilized, and they are utilized for like, you know, 1,000 times, which means there are going to be some kind of 1,000 records of 20 different bosses. So for that, for you to give a distinct count right now, you have to filter away all those duplicates that we have using a function that is called distinct count. I'm saying this because we are not using Power BI, this is Excel, even if you're using Power BI, I'm gonna tell you this, that this is what you need to do to have the accurate count. So we call what I'm talking about right now, we call this analysis count analysis. So count analysis. Your count analysis should always be done on the transactional table or the fact table. Don't do it over the dimensional table. Except you are very sure 100% that there will be no changes, you can do it over the dimensional table. There are some situations where you can actually go ahead to your dimensional table and start creating some counts, but I'm gonna show you what is a best practice. Let's quickly go over here and start doing our first DAX calculation. So right here we are in and we want to create our first DAX calculation. Where do we go? So open up the top ribbon here and make sure you click on your power pivot. As soon as you are there, the next thing you're going to do is to go over here and you click over here to your measures. So look at it. If I do this while I click on this particular one here. I'm going to get off this one. So I'm only left with this particular one. And the count this one is given to me right now is a count of how many transactions we have, right? I don't know. Age. So where is age found? Let's click over here. The age is found here and the age is giving me some. So I'm going to default the age to count. The age is giving me count, right? 
Now let's come to the fact table right here and drag in anything from there to here. This is giving me under one. So let's go over here and check this and do a count here. So we are having count different numbers, right? So let us now try to use DAX to do this. If I come over here now, I come over here to measures and here it says new measure. So because we don't have any measure written before, we can't manage measures right now. So let us click on new measure. So under new measure, we're going to have this particular box. So once, once you have this box, now here is a table name. So the table where this particular measure is going to start in is this one. If you remembered, we created a particular table, which I said we're going to store all our measures right in. We can go ahead and pick it up right now. This is calculation table, right? Now, for the measure we're going to calculate right now, we want to calculate the total transaction. Total transaction here. Okay, so if you have a description for this, you can actually let the description come into this particular box. But for now, there is nothing like description. So to calculate total transaction now is that how many times have we operated over time, right? That is what we actually want to calculate. So what I'm going to do right now is going to be some kind of uh, count rows. So what does the count rows do? The count rows count how many times uh, how many rows appeared inside our transactional table. So if you look at it, you know, uh, one thing I love about Excel is that it's going to give you, or, or DAX in, in, in that, for that matter, uh, is we have what we call IntelliSense and uh, every single function will definitely uh, give you some kind of way forward on what you need to supply to it for you to have it work. So right here we have table, which means the count row here is looking for a table to work. And that table is our fact table that we have. So if it says table, you cannot give it column. Column will not work here. So it's going to be table. Pay attention to this part. It's going to make your life very easy. So now we have this right here for the count rows. What we're going to do right now is to actually say, okay, for the count row, we want to count in our fact table. Immediately we type in our first elf, it's going to actually start bringing out all those particular, you know, columns that are inside the fact table. We don't want the column. We only want to see the fact table itself. Then we go ahead and close it. So when you're done writing this, the next thing you're going to do right now is to make sure you check if this is cool or not. So I'm going to just click on check. And it checks for your error and all of that. No error. Everything is doing well. So I'm going to go for number and I'm going to choose a whole number from here. Whole number. And I will just check the comma separator for me. So if I go ahead and click OK now. So I have the same thing I have over here when I click on drag. I told you we have what we call drag and drop. So when I click on the drag and drop, I have this particular part here. So now I use DAX to create something. I have this part that says transaction. I don't have to rename this one to get this one, but I have this one. So same value, which we have right here, no difference. So which means at the back end, what the Excel is doing is giving you some kind of distinct count. Oh, sorry, count, not distinct count. So count numbers of rows available, right? So we have created our first DAX right here. So we want to take a look at it. Which table do we have it right in? That is very important. So which table do we have our DAX right pushed in now? Okay. So when you do this, don't mind what you see right here that says you need to some kind of do X, Y, and Z. You don't have to bother yourself about it. So just go ahead and cancel this because we know we have relationships. So now over here, you can see we have gotten three tables used now. So we have calculations, the demographics, and the ridership, which is the fact table. Now, under calculation, we only have one single measure written right here. Interesting, right? So this is what it is that you need to know. So we're going to be writing more of them. The next thing is for we to calculate the average age. Average age. So which I believe is something that you will have to do extra work right if you want to use Excel function and formula to get it done. So to calculate the average right now, so we can come over here 
and we go over to this particular measure and we'll click on measure and we are still within the calculation so where we want to start our measures writing so quickly we type in here average age so for the average age what we can do is to use the average function so using the average function we type in our age here so once we just type in a so it brings all where we have the A writing. So we have age, we have age group. So we're gonna go with the age, not the age group. The age group is not more a number. It's actually a text or uh, data type. So I can go ahead and close it. And I click on okay here. And this gives me the average age. So for the average age, you can actually create the formatting for it. This is something we've forgotten to do right from uh, where we wrote this from. So that gives us a big room to see what we can do to get back there. So let's go back to our average age here. Right click on it and go over to edit measure. So we're back here. So you can edit your measure. If you think something is wrong, you can edit it right here. So I can decide to say this is a number and it's not on decimal. I want to use a whole number for it. So I don't need the comma separator. I can just click on OK. So it's going to give us a different result right here. So the average age we have in the age group of 0 to 19 is actually 18. The average age we have where uh, our age is 20 to 29 is actually 25. So the average age on 60 is 65, on above 60, 65. So you can see what it is that we have right now. So what we're looking forward to even creating is not the average age for every single age group. It's just the average age, like coming over here and drag our average age from here, our calculation. Oh, so we have not made use of our calculation anywhere else, so it cannot be on the active. So now I'm gonna go over to all, and here I can open it up. I can choose my average age. So the overall average age is actually 43 years old without taking into consideration any other dimension, right? So now we are having those particular average age now based on what we have here as a text-based or descriptive, you know, uh, column to slice the numbers. So what if I change it from what I have now to something different? I'm going to have a different entirely. So let's go to here. So we can now move this away. We can have this here. I'm going to put, push this right here. So click over here right now and go to bosses. So I'm going to go for boss number. So for the boss number, look at it. What we have is giving us the average age of the boss number to be 43 all true. So why is this happening? Because there is no some kind of direct relationship between the table where we created our average age from to the boss number. So for that, it's going to repeat the same thing over and over again. You get it right now. So when it gets to count of age, count of age is giving us 100%. That was because there is no direct link between those two tables. For that, you are expected to see something like this. So if we must do something that will give us a different value, what we can do is to find a table that has some kind of common relationship with our age and actually use it to some kind of filter that. So, and the only table that can do that for us is actually the fact table. So that is where we have direct relationship. If you want to check it out, what you can do right now is to go back up right here and click on the manage. So give it some time to open. So now it's up. Let's check it out. If we go over here now under the diagram, so we can now see demographic. So demographics is actually linked to directly um, the fact table ridership here is does not have relationship to this one to this and to this right here so which means if we have to do anything that has to do with direct slicer or to slice our data we have to slice our data with something from here or and all of that you get it right now so in case you're looking at it at like okay why the heck do we have 100 all true so there is nothing like filter context on it because there is no relationship between the two tables that is what it is that you would face when you get to Power BI. And this is the example of it.